103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hi, my name's Ty, and welcome to 103.9 FM Radio. This is Digital Free Thought Hour, or the Let's Trap Podcast. And we're going to be talking about how buying a bidet for your toilet is the exact same thing as coming out as an atheist. What? That doesn't even make any sense. Trust me, it does. We broke it down in six steps. It's going to be a fun one, guys. So let's just sit back, relax, and enjoy the chat. Welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is October 6th, and if it's not where you're listening, then you're listening to a rebroadcast of the show and should not try to call in. I'm Daughter 5, and as usual, we have Wombat on the phone with us. Say hello, Wombat. I got two saxophones. It's the Wombat. Too sexy. I hope you don't try to play them at the same time. <laughs> we also have guests Fan, uh, Fanny Anzai and the Dread Pirate. Say hello, guys. Girls. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> Ahoy there. Hey, hey. <laughs> okay. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a call in talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups here, that, right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them during the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there's been an atheist call-in talk radio, I'm sorry, TV show, broadcasting right here in Knoxville, and has been for nine years now, that? Did you know that one, Matt? Yeah, I know. And I'm really glad you brought it up because I didn't know you loved obscure Japanese comedy dramas, too. But it's really uh, good. It's I'm like sorry. it's it's so the basic premise is you are there's a guy who's a detective, but he's also a massage therapist. And he uses no. pressure points on people's bodies to figure out who the murderer is. And it's funny because oh, really? he's not good with people. So he's like an introvert. He's like, I can't touch your body. It's like a monk situation. No. You'd really love the no. show. I think most people should watch it. Check it out. Yeah. Oh, I think they should watch it, but it's not the one you're talking about. This is a call-in television <laughs> atheist call-in show, TV show, and it's on W on Comcast Channel 12 every Wednesday night. We'll give you more details after the mid-show break. And in spite of what Steve Martin would have you think, there are an awful lot of atheist songs out there, and you'll be hearing them right here on this program and generally on the station as they are in rotation. Today's topic is the stages of losing your faith and being coming an atheist yeah um, so, so you want to start that off time? Yeah, yeah 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 so i had a quick well, idea i had a quick uh, idea so it, this is not a tangent i know you always try to keep me on track but check this out i bought a toilet bidet no one no applause really? nothing like that no one cares <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you something. You live your entire thank you, thank you, thank you. You live your entire life and and I'm trying to make this radio appropriate, but you live your entire life basically sticking your hands in mud and wiping off the mud with dry paper towels, right? And you, mm -hmm. we yeah. think that was clean. We lived our entire lives thinking, "Oh, well this is just what my mom and dad does. This is what the people I love and the authority figures in my life all do the same thing. This must yep. be clean." Until you realize, "Wait a second, how do they do it other places? Because it can't be as clean as we thought, right? And you realize, yeah. no, it's not. You you expose yourself to the truth. You're convinced, and there's like this amazing moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this wrong my whole life. I can't see it the other way anymore. And so I finally got one. And the yeah. awkward thing is, is once I got it installed, I've had mine for about maybe three months now. I want to tell everyone How about long? it. Three months, three months. Oh, wow. Okay. I want to tell everyone about it. Like, but it's this awkward thing you can't bring up at work. You know, uh -huh. like certain friends don't want to talk about it all the time. You can't, I can't imagine why. It's, a, it's an awkward thing to bring up with family members. And the thing is, it's so frustrating because you know you're making sense. <laughs> and that they would love it. You know you're making sense and no one else yeah. believes you. Just like, listen, what, look at what you're doing. It's like, well, I think that's unsanitary. It's like, what you're doing now is unsanitary. Toilet paper is <laughs> unsanitary. Let's break this yeah. down. Like, can we just ha have some time to talk about this? And you try your best not to start an argument or debate with someone, but it's really hard not to it's really hard to yeah. stay out of that environment so, so do you bring this up in essays all the time man i wish i could <laughs> i wish i could you actually end up with this sort of superiority complex i had I, you go through uh, like this brief uh, superiority complex was like i'm better than everyone else because i believe this thing or like i have this bidet they don't they don't realize how amazing it is it's frustrating to live in a world like this and some people just won't change their mind 
And I don't know how to deal with that. So what I'm thinking is like the after you go through that moment of frustration and you go through the superiority complex and you realize some people just won't change their mind no matter what you try to do or tell them, you just have to start learning how to navigate your life in a toilet paper dominated world. You know, <laughs> it kind of feels right. like you're kind of feel like you're in the twilight zone because like, you know, something that other people either don't know or choose try to go around even if they do know it or just won't change their mind either way. And right. and you slowly transition from just abruptly telling people the facts <laughs> of reality uh -huh. versus just advocating in your comfort zones. Like if the conversation comes up, you'll you'll be able to say, actually, I found out this was a lot better and I actually have a bidet and it's actually worked out pretty well for me. Or like if you or, you know, use your own skill sets to slowly advertise <laughs> in yeah. the best way possible. How to like have good hygiene and stuff like that and why it's important for everybody to have the best hygiene possible if we care about hygiene. And I noted that, sure. that whole process, it's like a six step process is exactly how I came to become an atheist. And I was just like, wow, look at that. Isn't that interesting? So I wanted to talk about that. So basically like the six steps for me for becoming an atheist versus the six steps for actually buying the bidet. And that first step was like the convinced shocking moment that you realize, oh my gosh, I'm, I don't have a good reason for believing in a God versus, oh my gosh, I don't have a good reason for using toilet paper, right? Right. Uh, well, uh, a lot of people that I've read, uh, you know, the, I've read a lot of uh, deconversion stories, and I recommend that everybody who's deconverts from some religion to atheism uh, write their story down so it's available for other people Ooh, very good. Uh, to get to get uh, inspiration or just knowledge from. Yeah, even uh, anonymously would work. Right. Uh, Dan Barker, uh, He's the one of the heads of the Freedom from Religion Foundation. Wrote a book, and his first uh, moment of realization was that he he was a preacher in a very fundamentalist church, and he would he would talk his other preachers in the same church and everything for a long time. But then he was sent on a mission over to another church, which was a much more liberal church with much more liberal ideas about. Um, believe, in other words, that they were away from a fundamentalist. They were more. Uh, live and let live type mm. of thing and he came back and he talked to his other preachers and of course they wanted to get along with the other church and they said oh just let them believe what they want to we're all believers in christ and that to him was you mean i we don't have to go to the very fundamentalist uh, uh, level of this just to go to heaven he, you know he was saying this to himself not to the other preachers but that was the first thing he he it came to his mind about something's wrong with this because right. our church says we have to believe this stuff their church doesn't but our church accepts their their, their church right and and uh, everybody has some kind of little little uh wake up call i guess at the very beginning and i would uh analogize it to what you're talking about on the first step yeah i was talking to someone that you know the one of the uh, first defenses that you'll run into when you have conversations with people about their faith is well uh -huh. they all just believe my god like you'll bring up you know 40 different versions of christianity things that aren't even christianity hinduism buddhism right. jainism but like, yeah but we all just believe the same god but there are christians that don't even agree with that perspective so what is the person who's asking these questions as like an unbiased mediator supposed to say? And what I found is it's good just to remind them that there are other people who are Christians who wouldn't agree with that. Are they wrong? And can we come right. up with a standard to figure out who's right and who's wrong? Because that's what I'm trying uh -huh. to figure out. Once you figure that out, then I'll be happy to <laughs> listen to see what right. the argument is because I want to know true things too. But it seems like there's disagreement even between Christians. And that's a notable thing to make note of. I, True. I, I think your point I, was something that I was actually thinking of. It's like sometimes what some people need is to realize that their their God is not the only one true God that everybody believes. Right. They need to know that there is a neighbor that believes in another God that is not the same as his, and they use the same method to say they they are both true or the real one or the only one hmm. because they also are uh, monotheist gods that would not accept the neighbor to really believe in the other gods. Exactly. Yeah. What do uh -huh. you say about the monotheists who are like, <laughs> I'm the one the only God. Only God. <laughs> yeah. Versus polytheists are like, Strange we're an organization. Name. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, like but I think it's very like personal and there is this, this personal trigger. I would say that for me, 
I never really liked all the doctrines and all these, oh, believe in three gods, that's one person, that's mm. all to be, and I'm not going to teach you or explain how this thing works, but you just need uh -huh. to believe. Right. Right. But for me to be free, to feel free and it's like, no, no, I'm not that so wrong thinking this was like to realize that there were other people that think like me. And most of all, I think was when I broke down the creationism, um, circular reasoning of religious people saying like everything that is here is created by someone, hmm. you know? When, when I went more like to science and I found other answers for this question that is like, no, nobody needs to create the universe. There are things that have not been created, you know, yeah. like there are things that just became to exist is different. Right. And then you learn how this was possible. You find, and then you read the Bible and see how their metaphoric history that like story is, is, is told because for me it was like yeah i don't believe in adam and eve coming from god molding people from mud you know but i was like yeah it comes from something but when i found out like no no there are scientific reasons uh, explanations for every how everything came to exist mm, yes i i, I, I broke free of that <laughs> thing of like i have to have a creation right you know, a creator Mm. Everything has to have a creator. Hey, well, the thing about it is, if you don't know, uh, if we don't really know uh, who who or what created like the universe, I don't know is the best answer. Oh, my it's the gosh. most honest and logical answer. I love that. Uh, you don't go leaping to some supernatural being and particular supernatural beings right. at that. Right. Absolutely. I don't know yeah. is the best answer when you don't know something. But, but, but uh, the interesting enough is another thing that... Uh, I think it's common in human behavior. It's like as more ignorant you are, more you assume things and more sure. you say you know. You know, you see like the scientists and people that study a lot, they are always answering things like, I don't know. Let's find out. Right. You know, and uh -huh. other people that actually have no knowledge about anything, they're like, oh, let me tell you the truth. Let me show you. I know things. <laughs> and it's sort of... It's like, we should kind of kind of go around the table and yeah. ask what their first go. Uh, oh my goodness! Moment was. Oh, that's fantastic! Uh, from, yeah, from believers to 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 atheists. Dread pirate. What was your oh, aha moment? Our horror moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, geez, and I knew this was going to come up, so I was trying to think of uh, you know reflect. Um, but I'm not sure that I'm. How about you? Uh, how about I hear a couple other people and then it maybe will jog sure. my memory. I can go first. Um, I remember going to a philosophy class in undergrad. This was at a small school in Columbus, Georgia. And I thought I knew what morality was because I was a hardcore Christian back then. I didn't even watch the Powerpuff Girls. I was super, super serious <laughs> about my faith. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, um, I have the Ten Commandments. I know what morality is. You just do these things you know 10 things and you're a moral person turned out that's not the right answer <laughs> it, mora <laughs> no morality is not just a list of rules it's a system for how to make you know rules right. to abide good conduct and right. behavior Obedience for society it's not morality exactly and when i realized that like when i like when that switch finally flipped for me like after getting like the wrong answer in class so many different times that i'm just like well what is morality let me read this book oh my gosh this is what it is let me go through with the bible wait a second the bible doesn't say what this book says now i have a problem because <laughs> uh, yeah. i like what the philosophy book's telling me but i'm not getting that from the bible sure. oh no what's going on here and that's that was yeah. the the first uh switch for me honestly yeah fanny what about you well, I think it for me was the long process. I was just thinking here that I always, or before now, before this situation, I would say like, oh, I became an atheist when I came out of the closet. Mm. But I think we are all atheists as soon as you refuse one of the doctrines or you do not believe one of the things do not make sense and you're not attached to that Ooh, that's interesting. belief anymore. Yeah. You but know, you don't remember any particular it's, it's, instance of what you did? Uh, the first time was when I came to religious class and they told me about the Trinity. Hmm. And oh. I raised my hand and I said, okay, okay, I know a little bit of science and physics and this doesn't make sense because I just heard my physics professor saying two bodies cannot 
be in the same spot. So how one body can be, you know, become three <laughs> mm-hmm. and exactly. be in three different places and then be in one at the same time, this makes like no sense. That's and I was actually trying to reason at that moment and, and they just told me like, you don't need to understand, you need to believe. Oh. Right. And right. I felt so frustrated that I went back home and told my mom that I did not want to go to that class anymore. It was my first day and the first question they tell me they're not going to tell me. And it's like, I cannot learn things if I don't understand them. That oh, was yeah. my idea of learning things. I, You know, my parents taught me how to read and write before I went to school. I learned reading and writing when I was like two and a half, three years. So I wow. went to school where I could write my name and my father taught me math before I actually had that school. So mm. when the school came, I was like, this is so boring. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> know those things. Yeah. And, uh, and then I was really kind of like, kind of a smart kid. And I was just trying to understand things. I think all the kids are like that and different from other parents. My parents were not killing my curiosity, you know, my spirit of yeah. What is this? Why, why, why? They were always answering, you know? Yeah, well, very cool. Um, and I think that made me like like that. So I, I was like probably seven, eight, and then we were all school, uh, going to the religious school out of school. It's like a school in the afternoon. So you would just put the kids to go through all the the sacraments of the the, relig- the Catholic Church, you know? And we were first class and they just killed my curiosity and i was like okay mom i don't want to go there yeah i can't I would learn too. That's if a great they reaction. will not explain to me good for you, you know, yeah everything i get curious it makes me learn more because when they teach me when i have the question i absorb better and when i had they just told me i will not have explanations that this apparently this science is all based in faith you cannot have the thing that I'm looking for. Well, so I don't know if I feel it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At 12, I did something. <laughs> so I kind of, she, she <laughs> took me out of the school because also the professor complained to the director, to the principal. And the principal was kind of a friend of my mom, told her, it's like, Fanny's causing trouble. She's asking things and the other <laughs> kids get curious. You know, so I don't know if he, she fits for the school. And the, so my mom decided to take me away from school and put me in like a yeah. Uh, yeah, private you were, class. You, you were and a little troublemaker. She's, she's, she's still yeah. a troublemaker. And, ask, and asking questions. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll go next real quick. It won't take me long. My first yeah. come to moment was when uh, I, fir- I first met an atheist. I right. was 23 years old and never met one before. I didn't even know that not believing was an option until wow. I met her. Wow. So that that woke me up somewhat. Pir- uh, Dread Pirate, you uh, cogitated enough? Yeah, yeah. Um, so so I, I don't know if it, it certainly wasn't the first sort of inkling. Um, I think my my transition was just recognizing that um, uh, people didn't you know, like a lot of people I talked to didn't have a very high standard of. of evidence or wow. reflection about uh, some of the things they believe and as that sort of built up i was a freemason for uh, 20 25 years um and attending uh, these meetings with uh, you know a bunch of privileged white men yeah. um with high IQs. It, well, it just it just <laughs> became very obvious that uh, you know we weren't there um so much uh, you know, everyone was there for a different reason, um, and we were all performing these essentially these rituals right. um, that you know stem from a civilization thirty five hundred years ago, um, and it was magical thinking, wishful thinking, uh, and you know it came to a point where I just had to uh, you know tell the tell the group I says I I just sorry I can't come anymore I'm. I'm not your brother, <laughs> not in this sense anyway, right? Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, that was kind of, uh, yeah, that was my big transition period. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. I can tell you, it feels weird. I, I think I think everyone brought up a really interesting point in that even when you're shocked, you're already, before, so like, let me just put this in perspective. Before I bought the bidet, I was already a bidet person. 
if that makes any sense. So like before I even adopted, Absolutely. before I adopted the yes. atheist label and was finally comfortable with it, I was already an atheist because I knew I didn't believe in God claim anymore. So like that, that shock that I had was like the moment where it's like, oh, geez, where do I fall now? It's like, you're already out of the system. <laughs> we can already oh, yeah. draw you yeah. outside the yeah. Venn diagram. You're yeah. already not a theist yeah. anymore. Yeah. Exactly. I can tell you it feels weird when I finally got one, though. You know, when I finally got that bidet, because I wanted to tell everyone about it, (laughs) (laughs) but I couldn't find a good avenue to have these kinds of conversations with, because again, I couldn't bring it up to my boss. I can't just be like, hey, boss, let me tell you something about this toilet that I just got right now. Couldn't Uh bring it up to friends. I I felt weird because I was keeping it with myself that entire time. It felt awkward. My family, I didn't really want to get into specifics. And when I did, they didn't want to change their mind. They're like, well, you know, that's you. You you should have got a button. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I got a bidet. Yeah, well, I, like I really want to like just show everyone like check it out. I'm uh, right. You're wrong. Come on, get on the program. This is so. This makes so he, much sense. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You, you know, you know what would make a great button yeah. is bidet, mate. Oh, I like that, <laughs> Gary. That's actually really good. Hey, that's see. really good. I like that. I do like that. That's good. I really I'll keep that. Dread mind. pirate went to dread Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I, I think it's an interesting point, and I think it's probably worth talking about. Just because we became an atheist didn't mean it was all flowers and sunshine immediately afterwards. Like, what is that process of realizing that you have a perspective that's changed fundamentally your entire worldview and realizing that you can't bring that up with everybody? Like, th- was right. that awkward for you? Was it frustrating? Maybe we go through all around the table. I would say it was for me, and I've had conversations with my family who now believe four different completely religions. I have a, I have a sister that's a Muslim, a sister that's still a Christian, a mom that's a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I was lucky enough that they all split at the same time where I could just say, I'm not following anybody. <laughs> yeah. It made my transition yeah. much more easier. But what do you guys think? Um, well, uh, go for I'll it. start. Yeah. Um, I spent 30 years in the atheist closet. I didn't tell anybody. Mm. Wow! And then when I came out, I came out with a vengeance after nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> after nine eleven, and George Bush giving my tax dollars directly to churches, yeah. and reading a book by Carl Sagan called mm. "Demon Haunted World," mm. I came out and started the Atheist Society of Knoxville, and we now have nine hundred seventy-five members. We're getting close morning. to that one thousand mark. That's great. Yeah, we are. We're going to have to celebrate that. Yeah, we are. But congratulations! Thanks, but. Uh, it's, it was 30 years without telling anybody it was. It was tough. It really was. Mm. But finally, I got a chance to come out. I guess I made it for lost time. <laughs> Help me out, Larry. You, Your wife was an atheist, the one that you were referring to before. Were you able uh-huh. to be open about it with her? And like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But she okay. was the only person. Really? The, literally the only person? Not like literally. friends? Whoa. No. No, literally. The only person. She, but was she not an open atheist? Yeah. Or is no, she no, neither one of us. Neither one okay. of us came. So like this literally when you closed the door. A long time ago. This was 30 years ago. Uh, yeah, uh, 40 years ago. 50. Oh, man. Yeah. I, 1972. I wow. Yeah, because you haven't told me this story twice, and I was not sure if she was open. And you were still in the closet. No. Uh, in my case, uh, I, like I said, I started becoming an atheist, I think, or I never l- stopped being an atheist, you know, because my parents never indoctrinated me enough to be a religious person. Mm. And when I, other people tried, it did not work. Mm. So I was always an atheist, but I, I came out of the closet only after I met my husband. And, uh, uh, that was in 2012. We, we met in Montreal, in uh-huh. Canada, and then we went back to Brazil. And, uh, while there, because everybody's so religious, he kind of told me he was an atheist. And I was like, okay, I understand. And we talked about this and, and I agree with a lot of the things we talked. And he's like, you know that you're an atheist too, you know? Oh. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, Fanny, I want to know more I'm about this. Know. Fanny, I want to yeah. know more about this. But yeah. how about we just yeah. do the mid-show? We never talked about how about, this. We, how about we do the mid-show break and then we'll come right back to this. The the that, realization that, okay. what? I'm an atheist too? That makes no sense. That's great. <laughs> we'll come right back. This is 103.9 FM yes, radio, yes. low power Perfect. all throughout Knoxville. We'll be back right after this short break. See you in a bit. <laughs> 
You're listening to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on Wozo 103.9 LPFM in Knoxville, Tennessee. Feel free to join in on the conversation at 865-333-5937. That's 865-333-5937. And now, back to the show. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Simply the best. Welcome back. I'm Dowder Five, and this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WZO Radio 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is October 6th, and with us on the show today, we have the Wombat. Woo-woo! Hello, Wombat. And we have Fanny and the Dread Pirate. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk about the Free Thought groups that you can join here in Knoxville if you're interested in. First, it's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002. We're in our 17th year. We have almost a thousand members now, 975. Oh, we're almost find, there. We are almost a thousand. <laughs> oh man! And uh, you can find us and other links on uh, to our TV show, our radio show, and other groups here in Knoxville at knoxvilleatheist.org. And if you can't remember that, just go to Google and type in Knoxville Atheist, and you'll find all about us. And with that, I'm going to end the break and uh, go back to our conversation. Sounds great. Sounds great. Sounds great. We were le- you, we bet. left off just when Fanny came to a really amazing realization <laughs> with her husband. Uh, I won't go. I won't step on anyone's toes, but I'd say like your husband was an atheist, and then he's like, "Yeah, but don't you know you're an atheist too?" And you're like, "What?" Or yeah, because it's Portuguese. All right, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it was exactly like that. Uh, so. Like I told you guys, I never really accepted any doctrine. I passed through many beliefs. I went to a spiritist church. I went to reading books, called myself in the end. At this time in 2012, when we were together already in, in, in 2013, when we were already in Brazil, I would say, I would title myself a spiritualist. Mm. And I would say like, I did not, I would not follow any religion because no gods of any religion were good gods for me enough to believe them because i used to say like oh maybe one day i will open my own religion and my own church because <laughs> uh-huh. for me god is supposed to be all good right. but for some reason he can't do everything so he doesn't fit into the scriptures you sound you know? like it's, every it's non-denominational christian basically yeah. yeah really so and and also because he was so punitive for me, it was not that he could not be that good if he's going to burn you in hell forever. Right. You know, so it's like, no, my God will not be a God bad like that, you know, right. <laughs> just like this. Yep. And uh, so I went through many beliefs in churches and rituals, <laughs> follow a lot of things, read a bunch of books. And at this moment in Brazil, my husband's like, oh, I need to tell you that I'm an atheist because he, he was an atheist. He was I always saw him reading books, atheist books, and watching things. Were you already married, by the way? Or was it a surprise? No, that time, no, no. We married in 2014. Okay. So we met met in 12 Mm -hmm. and 13, we came to Brazil. He came to visit my family. He already wanted to get married. And we, we wanted to get married because of visa. We wanted to be kind of together, but not have to deal with the visa going back and forth six every six months sure so like yeah we're gonna get married and so let's put our families together and talk about this <laughs> and <laughs> he thought it was important to tell me that he was an atheist because i thought he was just like he interested you know he would watch and listen to so many things like oh he's just interested in just in this subject so he's reading and watching things and I'm fine with that. I like to, wa- I used to like to watch things with him too. And he's like, he talking to me more serious about that one day. He's like, he, we agree about a lot of things. And it's like, yeah. And then he comes to tell me all the things he has watched when I'm in my shift work. And it's like, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's like, Fanny, you know, you were an atheist. And I was like, what? No, no, I'm, I don't accept the title. You know, and it's when uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson like, style. As soon as you, as soon as you, as soon as soon as you refuse a doctrine or one of the things, and you sound, and then I have told him 
all my my history since my six years old when I found first time in a class being taught about religion. And he's like, at that moment, you were already an atheist. And in fact, you were born an atheist because I when like your born, husband. You don't yeah. believe anything, yeah. you know. And yeah, good guy. they tried to indoctrinate you. You did not go to. You refused. So right. you never left then indoctrinating you in any religion you try to fit because socially and and i understood that and i knew that was the pressure because when i did not fit in the catholic church i went to spiritism because it was the next thing that everybody else believed sure you know oh yeah people that do not believe don't go to church there is these other people that actually the church people say they are bad because they believe spirits and ghosts and they are kind of Fanny, we should then. Fanny, can and, I? Yeah, it's a, a lateral yeah. shift. For them, right. yeah. So I, I kind of went that way, and my mom, <laughs> I, I'll try to be short about it. Uh, my mom actually freaked out, and she fought me, and she did not talk to me about for a month when she learned when she learned that I was going to a spiritist church. Hmm. Fanny, I wish, I wish your husband would have a chance to be able to sit down and talk to Neil deGrasse Tyson and explain that to him, too, because, you know, he's a wishy-washy kind of guy with his with I, definitely. Regard to I, the, I actually uh, commented label. on the video on yeah. YouTube after I found because I told you I, I was so curious and I keep challenging my my beliefs. So I went after this video. Right. And uh, I found right away if you type Neil deGrasse Tyson and atheist is the first video that shows up. And when yeah. I watched it, I was so frustrated that I actually was defending him and that nobody brought me the video to confront me with the truth Right. Yeah. that I went there and I commented all over the, <laughs> the video but, but and on, then I said that, that, no, 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 oh, no. that I was wrong but on the flip side, and, and, yeah, on, no, on the flip side light at the end of the tunnel we do have Bill Nye the science guy who will openly argue or debate with any Christian <laughs> on the face yeah. of the planet and I'm like yeah. you've always been the one in my heart <laughs> uh, Dread Pirate yeah. What would you say is your experience with regard to like now that you know you're an atheist? How do you like deal with that? Were you still in touch with any of your uh, Mason friends? Uh, yeah, well, this is a very small community I live in. Uh, we've only got about eight thousand people here, and uh, I've been uh, you know a big part of the community for uh, you know the fifteen years I've lived here. So yeah, yeah there's no getting away from uh, those connections. Uh, even if I was inclined to want to, mm. um, you know, the, the fact, uh, that, uh, you know, some of these people are, are Masons is, is, um, I don't hold it against them. Um, they're still good people. Uh, um, and when the opportunities arise, for instance, my last SE, uh, video with, uh, that I posted there with, uh, Ray Lafleur, he's a, a mason who i actually introduced into masonry uh, and uh and you know we still uh, connect as good friends and have great conversations and um you know i just you know at, whenever the occasion arises to have a discussion especially around masonry with uh, some of these folks um i I just honed my SE skills, as it were. Hey, yeah. while we're talking about your SE, would you mind um, plugging your channel and what you're about? Because it's been a while since you've been on the show, and you've actually developed your channel way, way more since the last time we spoke. Well, yeah, thanks, Ty. And, and certainly it's been uh, due to uh, a lot of help from yourself, uh, which I certainly very much appreciate. And, of course, the SE community, uh, Street Epistemology community in general. Yeah, so... Um, so I hold these uh, things called chats over coffee, very good time, uh, which is at a local bistro, and um, I I do them every Monday at uh, four thirty in the afternoon, and um, and I post through, like I say, because it's a small community, so I can post them to the downtown business association on what's up Grand Forks, uh, you know, so it's uh, I get the message out locally. Um, and uh, I've had some really great responses uh, in, in people who um, are interested, but uh, maybe sitting on the fence a little bit because they um, are a little apprehensive about examining themselves or having those conver those deeper conversations. So it's, it's been interesting to see the resistance uh, in some people who I know would have 
you know, would be great interlocutors. Um, so uh, one thing I'm actually looking to do is uh, start up a thing called Skeptics in the Pub. Nice. Where it's more more of a yeah. group session. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I know the Center for Skeptical Inquiry out of uh, Kelowna here. They they've got one of those. So um, yeah, I think it's a it's an opportunity maybe to get more people interested in SE through a group session where it's um, not as one on one, not. Um, you know, they don't have to risk uh, being on point. So, yeah, so that's my story. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And how Very can nice. we get access to your channel? Would you say, like, what's a good place to find Oh, you? yeah. Uh, so, Mind Pirate on YouTube is where I post my videos. Uh, so, by all means, have a have a look there and subscribe please subscribe <laughs> yeah i can Sounds tell you i can tell you some tricks. I, I need well i need i i think it's a hundred subscribers or something in order to do some um customizing so okay. i think i'm at 39 so please subscribe yeah, we're gonna get you great. we're gonna get you i'll make some videos and we'll also plug you too i, I think it's a thousand a thousand for for monetize monetize no oh, monetization yeah great mm. yeah that is a thousand. I'm still yeah. far from that too. But I, I, uh, just get me to a hundred first, and then it. I'll worry about that later. <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, I'm gonna go check and, and subscribe definitely. And personally, what I'd okay, recommend, I recommend on Facebook it helps you. I would, I would, yeah, I would skip monetization and go straight for Patreon. That way, you won't have to sell out your channel to ads or like a whole bunch right. of other new guidelines. Because yeah, nothing sucks you're right. more. We've had that discussion before. <laughs> nothing sucks more than like yeah, a great I'm conversation working, about why someone doesn't believe in God, and then a big pop up for like a Baptist church shows up in someone's house. <laughs> 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 you're like, hey, have you gotten this album yet? God's the one true way. Um, That's right. Here you're talking about bidets and someone starts selling toilet paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, that's a great transition. Speaking of which, I want to talk about the last stage of becoming this atheist. When you're learning to navigate life in a toilet paper world, I have notes here saying learning how to navigate life in a TP world. Every It's like I said, living in a twilight zone where the episode is everyone believes in this fairy tale that you don't or kind of like an emperor's new clothes that fairy tale where you're the only kid that knows that the emperor is actually yeah. naked but everyone's convinced uh -huh. that he's wearing clothes and you're just like yeah well i tried convincing people it wasn't worth it um i don't really have a good way of doing it yet i'm i'm just gonna i realize even if i did have a good method that i won't be able to change the world overnight this seems to just be my reality now. <laughs> uh -huh. And let me tell uh -huh. you something. I, I got something to take off my chest. Since I was a child, my mom has always told me, Tyrone, you don't know what it's like in the real world yet. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll go to school and I'll try my best. And then I'm in school and she's like, Tyrone, you're not in the real world yet. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll get a job in government. It's like, Tyrone, you're in government. You're not in the real world yet. Now I'm working for profit and industry and like I'm handing my own. I'm paying all my bills, all that stuff. And I realized ever even since I left college, like basically everyone's not living in the real world. I'm the only one except for my, uh, like other atheist friends that I got. Yeah. But like, yeah. Man, what is it a twist to realize that yeah. the real world that she's referring to is one where everyone's deluded into believing that a god exists? Or yeah, something. there, there. I saw a thing on the internet that was kind of cute. It says, "It's like being the only sober person in the car, but they won't let you drive." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Ooh, that's, that's really awesome. good. That's really, yeah. really good. That's a really good one. <laughs> so, how about we do a final roundtable on like how have you learned to you know compensate or survive or just you know exist as Someone who maybe has like the exact same situation as Larry put the sober person in a car full of drunks and you know you don't have your hand on the wheel. How do you go about that? I'm jumping out of the car. I'm not running. <laughs> <running. laughs> I will go. I, I'll go buy food. You know, I trust. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, uh, now I think it, the the point is like we have seven billion of people in this planet and we we have so many people that are in the enlightenment already and other people walking to it so we don't need to actually be attached to family friends or oh, just because they are old friends or because they are family if they do not want to deal with you because of your belief you know hmm. um I, I think I, I bring this like very personal because I have my brother that doesn't talk to me because he is very religious and right. I'm not. And w when I see this, I only 
I only, it, it, it only proves to me that I'm right because what I see is like, he is so religious. He says he's like, his God is that good and he is that good, but he gives more value to a imaginary being than to a real person that have lived most of his life with him, you know, that I'm real and that we have this, not just the lace, but not just the, the family relationship, but we had some, a lot of things together when he was not a religious person, you know, yeah. and then he just found God, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, it is or everywhere, or it doesn't make sense. And, you know, so when you much, say you're jumping out of the car and walking, what does that mean as far as like a, uh, like in real world terms? What does that mean? What are you doing? Oh, I'm saying that uh, I will definitely just let go of people that will let go of me for their beliefs. Mm. You know, it's like, it's not that I'm refusing my relationship with him. It's him making God more important than his sister. Right. You know? Right. I understand. So, and we, we cannot just like, oh, I'm sorry or whatever, because that is not enough. It's not what they want. They want us to convert. Right. And it's not the same thing that I'm trying to do with him. Don't understand. Exactly. You know, right. like, yeah. Because a lot of people think atheists. For example, what uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson says is uh, he's saying like, oh, I refuse to be an atheist because atheists behave like this. And that's not true. It's not true. You know? It's atheists really bad. Or open to believe in a God. Can I repeat what he says? Can I, comes can, around. can I just yes. repeat what he said? He says, I don't I, I don't like being called an atheist because uh and it's really gross over our generalizations because all they do is grossly over generalize and argue with people and i'm like that's what you're doing though you're you're <laughs> you're basically over grossly generalizing an entire group of people including people who've never yeah, converted right. to a theist being very perspective with group. and i i mean when i hear something like that it does one it doesn't surprise me because look there's another aspect to play here like old black man <laughs> doesn't like atheists that doesn't surprise me but when it's like neil degrasse tyson <laughs> the guy who like did carl sagan's show like made another season of it you yeah. would think like he had at least right. been exposed to good atheists like his friend bill Nye the science guy so i it's think just it's bizarre. dishonest i think it's dishonest his position of refusing the atheism term just because he refused to be part of a movement because mm, the right. word has a meaning and when he put when he actually explains his position about God, it's exactly what atheist means. Right. So he cannot just say like, oh, I'm not an atheist, but atheist means this. Right. Uh, you know, like it's so hypocritical. But it seems like and, it, and it's, it's, he's denying the meaning of a word because he refuses to follow a movement when there is not right. a, a, actually a, an atheist movement or an atheist church because you cannot herd cats. Right. So Matt, they are yeah. not walking yeah, together. Sam, Sam Harris is the same way. Oh, I didn't know um, that. Sam Harris yeah. is not an atheist? Yeah. Well, he refuses the title. He doesn't like to use it. He says too much baggage. But I, I've always felt that it's a very honest appellation. You know, it's one that we need to redeem. Yeah. We should certainly not stop using I mean, we should certainly should not stop using it simply because it affects the very, or offends the very people who made it a curse word in the first place. Or, yeah, especially when it... <laughs> When there's money from a general public supporting whatever endeavors that you're having, you will tend to try to do whatever assuages the most people. Like, you tend to just be persuaded by that money. And I find, like, Jordan uh -huh. B. Peterson, this this thing that, that's going on with Neil Grice Tyson and Sam Harris is more of, like, a representation of, hey, there's so much money in not me being labeled an atheist that I'm just going to yeah. keep coasting. <laughs> right. And I'm like, right. dude, show some character. Like, Matt Dillahunty yeah. did do a talk with Neil Grice Tyson where, at the end, Matt was like, he was convinced he was an atheist. By the end of the conversation, he was convinced that he was. So, like, he uh -huh. is he's the type where it's like, <clears throat> you know, it doesn't take much reasoning for him to realize yeah i get that i just don't like being you know associated with it as an identity group and i get that like we have street epistemologists who won't say hey i'm i'm part of the atheist group but they would say like i'm an atheist but like i'm not part of like an identity group it's just a function of me not yeah. believing in god and i get that like right. Like I'm not signed up. <laughs> I don't have membership dues. No, like, I think yeah. I think uh, I I I agree. I'm very not communistic in that way. I, like I don't like to be like communistic in the idea of like oh yeah I'm part of a group. Exactly. But I think it, it, the it is important to have a community and to mm. kind of a try to raise together uh is a, a kind of a, like a, a spirit of more a secular morality. Right. 
because it's important, you know. And uh, and I think one of the good speaker for atheism, as an atheist, proud atheist, for example, that we're talking about so some important names and Sam Harris and Neil deGrasse Tyson are people that people claim atheists claim their atheism and they they refuse, but there are good atheists to be like you mentioned Bill Nye yeah. and I would say like Dave David Silverman. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, David Silverman. That is like he has like amazing speeches of atheism and how atheism is awesome, you know. And uh, and I think he also needs some help to come back out of the. I don't know if you guys know about what happened to him. He was president of American Atheist, yeah. And then he lost his job because of false rape accusation. That is like another super trending talk online because of me too versus false accusations so i think yeah it's nice to talk about him and people go check his videos yeah. he has like amazing atheist speeches yeah, cool. really really nice one thing that very uh, proud that, atheist yeah one thing that gets me about uh people who don't so will tell you i don't believe in god but i'm not an atheist Boom. is that they're like standing to the side pointing at atheists saying i'm not with them yeah and, and it kind of, you know, that's the very definition of the word. Yeah, and theists well, right. eat that and up. You, yeah. I wait for you to use that word. Yes. yes. And that's the whole reason I started the Atheist Society in the first place. I was a member of the Rationalists of East Tennessee, and they didn't want to use the A word. Right. They said, well, some of us aren't atheists, even though all of them pretty much didn't believe in God. And they didn't want to use the word. And I'm so glad you used the word because when I knew I was an atheist and I moved to Knoxville, the first thing I did on meetup was look up atheists because I'm like, there has to be some other group of people that are like, like this group that I'm in. And I saw rationalists from Tennessee, but I had no idea what they were. (laughs) And I'm like, there's gotta be atheists here somewhere. And I found your group. I'm like, are you still around? And I sent you an email, you know, five years later or however long we've known each other now, (laughs) it's changed my life. Like I've been doing talks now. I've been going like all over the place. Like this is, it's important to let people know what you are, honestly, straight out. And I, and I I really appreciate the fact that you did that, you know? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the most important things of us, uh, standing proud atheists with morals, with, you know, showing as an examples of successful good atheists is to to bring more this proud spirit to the world instead of like this negative right. feeling of these people put of like oh atheists uh-huh. are bad people or atheists are people that are fighting religious people. No, no, we are opening to reasonable discussions to to logic and reasonable thinking we communicate you know, we, we, we're these, charitable and, and we're not trying to right. convince anybody of anything we're just uh challenging your own methods you know so yeah. it's mm-hmm. if you refuse it and and also one thing that is very important i have read this book of peter Bogosian. impossible conversations <laughs> is not harassing people that are not willing to have conversation with you it's exactly. people that are actually open to have a conversation and are challenging their own beliefs because if you really want to believe something is true, at least once you're gonna have to challenge your belief. Right. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it's exactly. healthy. Dread Pirate, what do you think? I agree. <laughs> 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 I I ha- I have I have um, uh, Bogosian's latest book on my table. I've not yet had the chance to uh, dive into it, but I am so looking forward to it. Yeah, it's cool. amazing. I'm reading for the third time. <laughs> so we're getting close to the last couple of minutes of the show. How about we do a roundtable final thoughts? I would say, hey, yeah. um, I thought I think we learned some cool things that, like, apparently buying a bidet. Very similar to being an atheist. Now, here's the challenge <laughs> that I'm I'm going to challenge even the people in this conversation. Get a bidet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I, I have to watch I, the I videos first. So, so here's, the, here, here's the thing. It's a little technical, but like you go on Amazon.com, you search bidet, you'll find adapters for the toilet that you already have. They have ones that will fit your toilet, guaranteed. And they're only $14, okay. right? And wow. you look at the videos, you just look at some of the videos and you'd be like, wow, the installation is not hard at all. I did mine in like about five minutes or so. And the uh-huh. water is clean. It's the same water that you shower with. And then the water that right. goes to the tank is a completely different source. Like you get to the so, water before it even touches your toilet. It's amazing. 
So, huh. so do you? So the bidet actually fits the toilet. The bidet fits on top of the toilet seat, on the back of the toilet seat, and there's many different oh. kinds of styles. You can have one that are like adjuster cool. seats, ones that just sit in from the side, ones that shoot out hot water and cold Ooh. water, some that have nozzles that Ooh. rotate, uh, the self cleaning wow. ones. It's amazing. It's amazing the technology that's available to you for about twenty bucks. And it, you've, let me tell, you've opened me. You've opened me to the bidet universe. The <laughs> amount of money I have saved on not buying toilet paper in these last three months is pretty. It paid for itself basically within the first month. <laughs> I would say that. Also, wow, you use a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> well, I mean, like the efficiency of it is just so much better than wiping. <laughs> just be honest yeah, yeah. with you. Well, and, you. You must have been a you must have been a water, not a folder. No, let me tell you something else. I I, I will have times where I need to use the bathroom at work, and I'll be like, I don't want to use the bathroom at work. I have like a four minute commute. I'll just wait till it's lunch break and just go home and use the bathroom, <laughs> or wow. wait until I get home because it's just so much more of an efficient process than wiping out smudgy stuff. And I know it's radio. <laughs> but like it's not clean it's not clean yes. just try it out I, I hate living in a world yeah. where i'm the only one that makes sense <laughs> all right Fan, uh, fanny what's what's your uh closing thoughts for the show fanny you still there sorry sorry no you're all right what's your closing thoughts for the I show? i have i have a noise here I, i'll have to mute can you put someone else sure dread pirate yeah, well, um, as you know, or may know, or may remember, I, I am a Pastafarian, so um, I do try to connect with my community on on that level as, uh, you know, sort of um, a belief community. Um, so people that are interested in, uh, you know, examining their beliefs, um, but are really attached to the idea of community such that uh, religions provide there's another option and uh, we're it nice. so i yeah. had i had friends at there work scoff at the idea of pastafarianism they were like can you and can you believe there are people that believe that there's like a spaghetti god and i and i was like yeah is that any more silly than <laughs> believing in talking snakes that give dietary precisely. advice precisely and they're precisely and they were like whoops and i was like oh did i just play my a card <laughs> with these i think you did <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well cats out of the bag with these three dudes at least i'll, I'll yeah. work on a slower introduction with everybody else but yeah 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 so all the power to you um larry how about uh since fanny's out why don't you take an extended um sure. closing thought i'd like to plug a few sites um uh like if, if you're recovering from religion there's an always go to re recovering from org. they have a lot of resources for people who are uh seriously questioning or ha are having some uh issues uh with fear of hell uh type of thing and uh, they've got a lot of resources on that site for you, recoveringfromreligion.org. If you'd like to read a lot of uh, other people's deconversion stories, you can go to positiveatheism.org. Uh, it's a, been a very good resource for me when I was um, researching that area. Uh, a lot of stories on there. And, of course, for a lot of regular uh, resources for, for atheism, go to my site, digitalfreethought.com. There's a lot of uh, questioning documents on there, a lot of articles, and all of the podcasts that we've been doing are available from digitalfreethought.com. Just go there and click on it and listen to any of the 150 episodes we have on there. Nice. And take us out. Okay, I'm back. Oh, Fanny's <laughs> here. Don't take us out just yet. Fanny, yeah. close your thoughts. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> Can I? Yeah, go yeah. for it. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm, I was going to just pull back one thought from all those uh, arguments and trigger triggering thoughts for becoming an atheist. And I, I was thinking about the creationist idea and was when I was like, do you really uh, accept evolution? And I was like, yes, I do. You know, like I do understand how evolution oh, yeah. works. I uh -huh. accept that we came from evolution. And it's like, so Adam and Eve doesn't make sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does Adam and Eve did not even need to exist. And right. therefore, n no need for Jesus to die in the cross. And then everything breaks down. And I have actually sent this message to a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And when I, she received that, she's like, 
Oh, I will have. I, I will need to go. I will need to go because I have to think about this right, right now. If right. I could just broke my my entire belief down, yeah. you know. And she actually have talked to me back and said, like, "Oh, getting freer from belief." And I think the the one of the things that I have read from the book, Impossible Conversations, is like one thing before you walk away is always leave your intentions behind. And the intention of the atheist opening all these discussions is for people to be freer and be happier because we know how, how all those beliefs make people, you know, have prejudice, have problems in relationships, have problems of accepting their, their own, their, themselves sometimes. And I think that is, is the message <laughs> of us atheists of like, are you just annoying people that want to, talk against all the beliefs and it's like no no we want people to be clear and free be free from all those beliefs right Very i couldn't nice. agree more i love it and that's the end of our show uh we'll see you next wednesday Wait, i guess it's, at seven o'clock it is not the end yet you have to it say is. something you have to say something <laughs> to close well, i out. was going to okay okay 160 <laughs> episodes in you can't forget yeah now. Everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that hells and heavens and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. We'll see you next time. Talk to you later. Say bye. 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 Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Simply the best. Thank you for having me. WLCOLP 103.9 FM, Knoxville.